On August 6, 2020, two genetic scientists published a peer-reviewed study in the PLOS Journal that shatters what we know about human DNA and who our true ancestors are. Melissa Hubish and Amy Williams received praise for their breakthrough, with many researchers agreeing that the average human carries alien DNA, maybe even you. But how can this discovery be possible when, as far as we know, we're the only ones in the universe? Can our newfound technology point us to a long-lost parent, one with extraterrestrial origins that redefines our understanding of humanity's origin? When Melissa Hubish of Cornell University and Amy Williams of Adam Siepel of Cold Spring Harbor Laboratory got together to work on this study, they tried to take a closer look at human DNA to understand some gaps in our current knowledge. To do so, they created a new algorithm called the ARG Weaver D, a new way for us to read genome sequences. If you remember anything from your biology classes on genetics, you know that every human has a unique DNA that carries all the instructions your body needs to function. And because every individual has a unique DNA, it allows investigators to nail a murderer to the scene of a crime and steers drama on talk shows when the host declares, you are not the father. Since we inherit half of our DNA from each parent, many of us are more familiar with the immediate use in crime scene investigations and paternity tests. However, using modern technology to study our genetic material, scientists can tell you more than just who your parents, grandparents, or great-grandparents are. They can look back thousands of years and piece together the DNA of our common ancestor with our closest animal relatives, the chimpanzees. And with the help of fossil records, we can trace our evolutionary pathway and get a better understanding of our past lives. But what does any of this have to do with aliens? Well, despite all the progress we've made with mapping our DNA, there are still gaps in our understanding of human evolution, a missing link, if you will. To find it, geneticists have to create elaborate codes for genome sequencing of our known ancestors' fossils. In other words, they have to create an algorithm to help them understand our genetic history. It's kind of like trying to figure out the ingredients that make up a sandwich. Sure, you can stop at bread, tomato, lettuce, and cheese, but you could break it down even further by asking what the sauce is made of, and even further by asking what the mayonnaise in the dressing is made of, and so on. So through genome sequencing, we can understand an organism's genetic makeup, and with the right algorithm, you can compare two different DNA and find a pattern between them that shows how they're related. That's how we know you share 99.9% .9 of your DNA with all humans on Earth, 98.9% .9 with chimps, and 60% with the chickens that make up your chicken sandwich. Now, back to the ARG Weaver D algorithm that Melissa Hubish and Amy Williams discovered. They used this code to compare two of our well-known humanoid relatives, the Neanderthals, to one of our modern ancestors, a Denisovan, and two modern African humans, and the results were shocking. But before we get into the nitty gritty of their discovery, remember to give this video a thumbs up if you're enjoying it, and tell us what you think about the missing link or your wildest theories on our ancient ancestors in the comments below. In the research, Melissa Hubish and Amy Williams discovered that 3% of the Neanderthals' genome came from ancient humans, while 1% of the Denisovan genome came from the unknown distant relatives that are still present in modern humans. This breakthrough tells us that we know even less about our ancestry than we originally thought. And because we have no fossils to point us to who this ancient parent is, some scientists believe that the genetic codes that don't fit could point us to an intergalactic heritage. But could some of our ancestors truly be otherworldly? And could we be the products of an interplanetary love match? From what we know about our earthly ancestry, the first of our species, 
Homo sapiens appeared in East Africa about 200,000 years ago, but roughly 50,000 years ago. Some of these early humans migrated out of Africa to Eurasia, where they interbred with another human species, the Neanderthals. And we still carry those links within our DNA today. However, Hubish and Williams's research and discovery of the ARG Weaver D algorithm makes us question that timeline. After all, if a Neanderthal's genome shows evidence of ancient human parentage, then interbreeding with these species may have been more common and further back than we originally thought. Our new insight shows that we could have been interbreeding with Neanderthals and other undiscovered human species that left their mark on our genes long after they died. Perhaps the alien DNA in our genetic sequence is simply the result of several thousand years of forbidden interspecies love affairs, kind of like how different breeds of dogs mate together to make new ones. On one end of the spectrum, you have an arctic wolf, and on the other end, you get a chihuahua. Still, while gene flow is a well-established fact in the science community, that doesn't mean some of the unknown sequences in our DNA couldn't have come from human-like forms from another planet. If at some point we made contact with aliens similar enough in DNA to our own, we could still share the same genes with these extraterrestrial visitors. Who knows, you might discover you're allergic to kryptonite or that you could activate some of your Viltrumite powers. But take it easy, Omni-Man, panspermia. However, this theory is hardly new. Even before the discovery of ARG Weaver D algorithm, scientists and philosophers alike have proposed the idea that life did not originate on Earth. They call this theory panspermia, and it dates as far back as the 5th century BCE to the time of the ancient Greeks. It assumes that the first microorganisms that would eventually become humans, complete with their DNA, came here from far corners of the universe, possibly on space dust, meteoroids, or even on a spacecraft. Not many mainstream scientists buy into this idea, and they're not exactly sure how it's possible. I mean, come on, humans can't survive for long in space, so what's the likelihood of a much more primordial life form making it across our universe? However, theorists believe that some microbes under the right conditions can survive in space. If some bacteria or plant spores find themselves trapped in the debris ejected to space during a rare cosmic collision event, they could find themselves on a one-way trip to a distant planet outside our solar system. So who knows, maybe the asteroid that wiped out the dinosaurs could have been harboring DNA that helped us conquer the planet. Perhaps on impact, unique DNA from our planet got to the far reaches of the planet where it's now thriving. Even in more recent times, modern scientists like Francis Harry Crick believe this theory to be true. And as one of the molecular biologists who discovered the double helix structure of DNA, he's one of the reasons this theory gets more traction. After all, Crick argued our DNA is too elegantly structured and much too complex to have just spontaneously popped out of nowhere. So he developed a theory with Leslie Orgel called Directed Panspermia, which suggests that intelligent beings from another planet brought the initial seeds of life to Earth. If that's true, could we be the last survivors of a dying world, like Superman? Or is it possible we're a living experiment in an alien science project? Even in the 21st century, there's some evidence to support Crick's theory. In May 2013, a mathematician and astrobiologist working together in Almaty, Kazakhstan, made a shocking discovery in our DNA's genome. Using advanced sequencing tools, they uncovered a unique genetic code outside of the ones that determine our physical characteristics like hair color and height. But because this second code appeared in our genetic sequence nine separate times, the two scientists, Vladimir Sherbak and Maxim Mukakov, argued that it couldn't be a coincidence. They advocated that it had such precise mathematical patterns they couldn't decode, a life form far more intelligent than we are must have planted it there. 
For context, the chances of the complex mathematical code appearing in our DNA up to nine times at random is one in a trillion. So it's highly unlikely that it spontaneously appeared to give us life. But that still leaves the million dollar question. What is it? An ancient astronaut theorist, Giorgio Tsoukalos, argues that there's a possibility our ancient ancestors tampered with our DNA, possibly inserting a bit of themselves into us to give us intelligence. If that's true, we could be the product of an artificial mutation by extraterrestrial life forms, maybe even the very first organic versions of artificial intelligence in the universe. That would answer so many questions about modern society, and it could even explain our obsession with trying to recreate life with modern technology. Perhaps in the same way our ancient ancestors created us, and maybe like them, our alien parents encoded in our DNA a desire to replicate artificial intelligence the best way we know how. Another notable believer of the panspermia was English astronomer Fred Hoyle. Like Crick, he believed life was too complicated to have spontaneously come from nothing. It's now said that Hoyle was ahead of his time when he first proposed that comets carrying water and ice could also harbor organic compounds, like a virus with the DNA for life. So he theorized that one of those viruses could have been the first form of life on our planet. But Hoyle's theories about viruses coming to Earth weren't only limited to the distant past, billions of years before Homo sapiens came on the scene. He believed comets containing viruses were behind deadly crises like the 1981 flu pandemic, polio, and mad cow disease. Maybe he would have thought that the COVID-19 virus was also extraterrestrial if he'd lived long enough to see it. It's safe to say Fred Hoyle was convinced that planet Earth simply didn't have the right enzymes to produce a living cell. He compared the probability of that happening spontaneously to the chances that a tornado sweeping through a junkyard might assemble a Boeing 747 from the materials therein. Talk about a rare sight to see. But could a virus have sown the seeds of life on Earth? Does that make us distant cousins with microbes that cause the flu? As crazy as that sounds, there's some evidence to support Hoyle's insane theories about our origins from viruses. In 2015, Proceedings of the National Academy of Sciences published a new study that threw the scientific community for a loop when it showed we might be even less human than we thought. The research revealed 19 new pieces of ancient viral DNA in our genome, possible pieces of our heritage from other hominid groups, or evidence of our alien parentage. However, the most shocking discovery from this study was that 2% of the subjects had the full genetic code for an entire virus. Imagine having a cold that doesn't go away for hundreds of thousands of years. Now, before jumping to conclusions, it's important to note that our ancient ancestors battled with viruses. So it's possible that the subjects with these viruses' genetic code implanted in theirs got these fragments from their ancestors' genome, kind of like a mother infected with HIV passing it to their child. And while these fragments, known as human endogenous retroviruses, or HERVs, may not be harmful to us today, they could point to a much distant link to extraterrestrial viruses. On the other hand, rather than linking us to an ancient virus that mutated into the first signs of life, these unknown viruses could tell us about our non-human ancestry. What if we were visited by a civilization from another world carrying this viral DNA and infecting us with it either by interbreeding or some other form of artificial tampering? Could the unique DNA of these viruses point us to the home planet of our alien parents or perhaps the origin of life itself? But if the theory of having extraterrestrial origins sounds a bit too far-fetched to you, you're not alone. Scientists who are more skeptical about the panspermia theory believe that Melissa Hubisch and Amy Williams' research only strengthens older studies on gene flow. After all, there are so many hominid groups we don't know about, and just because we haven't found their fossils doesn't mean our unique DNA originated from outer space. 
On the contrary, our genome could indicate a more complex relationship with other human species in sort of a twister-like family tree. Because from what we know about our past, we were genetically similar enough to mate with Neanderthals and have some of our DNA leave a permanent mark on theirs and vice versa. Another reason panspermia doesn't have mainstream support from many scientists today is that it doesn't answer the question of life. It merely places that burden on an unknown celestial body. Because if our original DNA piggybacked to Earth on a comet from another planet, then how did it come into being before that? Where did the aliens that perhaps created our DNA get theirs? In addition to counter Vladimir Shervak's claim of the complex arithmetic code in our gene being a product of extraterrestrial tampering, scientists like David Berlinski believe that evolution is a stochastic process. So what do you think? Are the theories about alien life forms encoding something special in our DNA a bit of a reach? Maybe our existence is merely a coincidence and the so-called alien DNA we've discovered are simply prehistoric human species we've yet to uncover.